Donald Trump is nearing complete vindication from the impeachment process. This may be one of the best days he's ever had because outside of a few court victories, he's actually got a press victory under his belt as the Washington Post has written an article refuting much of the Russiagate lies and calling out one of the most notorious Russiagate proponents on MSNBC. First, article of impeachment number one, abuse of power. Well, as it turns out, a Ukrainian court is forcing a probe into Biden's role in the firing of prosecutor Viktor Shokin, which may show that Trump was justified in saying we should look into what this guy was doing. It may now actually happen. The other story is that a powerful court has sided with Trump and said his former lawyer can ignore a congressional subpoena. Well, that was article of impeachment number two, obstruction of Congress, arguing that because Trump said certain people shouldn't testify, he should be impeached. Now, let me stop. These are not total and complete vindications for the president. Just a little bit. But we do have another story, not bad from the Washington Post, where they're calling out a high profile Russia gator for being wrong. This has just been a great day for Donald Trump. He's coming off of a historic peace agreement, and now he's got court victories and a major press victory. Let's read through exactly what's going on. But dare I say, earlier this month was one of the best weeks Trump had ever had, one of the worst weeks the Democrats have ever had. And now at the end of the month, one of the best weeks again for the president, as, as I stated, he's nearing total vindication. Now, you'll may, you may notice I'm talking about the Washington Post in two of these stories and BuzzFeed. So let me stress, I love using leftist media sources. You know why? Because you can't deny it. If BuzzFeed News and the Washington Post are saying it, how are you going to try and claim it's fake news or a smear? That's how you know this stuff is very likely to be true because even they can't deny it. Let's get started with the first story from BuzzFeed. A powerful court sided with Trump and said his former lawyer can ignore a congressional subpoena. House Democrats had demanded that former White House General Counsel Don McGahn testify about the Russia probe and thought he could help their impeachment case. Now, before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways you can give, but the best thing you can do is share this video. Why, I assure you there are many people who will just absolutely not believe it, but let me stress this is BuzzFeed News. Okay, fine. Maybe even they will smear BuzzFeed News and say not good enough, but how about the Washington Post? Hopefully this will be enough to crack some echo chambers and get some information to various groups who might not otherwise want to hear it. I will also mention some, st uh, some statistics. 30 or so percent of the people who watch my content don't actually subscribe. So if you hate me, by all means, don't do it. But if you do like my content and want to see more, please consider subscribing. Hit that button. Hit that notification bell. That way you'll get notified when my videos come up because YouTube is actually doing a lot to prevent my content and content from other political commentators from seeing the light of day. But let's read from BuzzFeed. They say, a federal appeals court on Friday ruled that President Donald Trump's former top White House lawyer, Don McGahn, can avoid testifying before the House of Representatives, giving the president a victory in his efforts to block his senior staff from appearing before lawmakers. The case had arisen in the context of the Russia probe with relevance that extended into Trump's impeachment proceedings as the president blocked several members of administration from testifying. But it also raised questions about whether the president enjoys blanket powers to stonewall congressional investigations. Listen, they wanted Trump's staff to testify. He said, don't. They said, how dare you obstruct us? But Congress is not above the executive branch. They would need to seek relief through the courts if they actually wanted to accuse Trump of obstruction. If the courts ruled, yes, Trump, you must have your, your staff testify. And then Trump still said no. Fine. That's obstruction. But in fact, the courts have sided with Trump in at least one of these instances. So it's no wonder the Democrats in their impeachment process didn't bother going to the courts, thus undermining the entire impeachment. It's because we now know they would lose. The two to one decision led by judges appointed by Republicans. Oh, is that is that what you're putting in BuzzFeed? Said the House Judiciary Committee lacked standing to bring the case arguing the dispute should be worked out by the White House and Congress, not courts. The decision from the U.S. Court of Appeals for Washington, D.C. overrules a lower court's November order against the president and said the case should be dismissed. A constitutional provision known as Article 3 that dictates the sort of cases judges can adjudicate, the court wrote, forbids federal courts from resolving this kind of interbranch information dispute. 
The case had become a closely watched indicator for larger battles over Trump's powers with Congress and, looking ahead, decades of future White House maneuvers. In particular, it may establish whether presidents can yoke their aides away from Congress, even if those staffers have intimate knowledge of possible misconduct. It's because of privilege and it's because of the checks and balances. No one branch is more power- powerful than the other. But this specifically undermines Democrats' second impeachment plans. Now, of course, I think the Democrats have many plans for impeaching the president a second time. But this story from Politico, House counsel suggests Trump could be impeached again. The comment came in a filing with federal court with federal court that argues Democrats still need testimony from former White House counsel Don McCann. Trump has won against the second impeachment before it even happened. No, the reality is if the Democrats sought court relief over the other people that Trump said don't told not to testify, there wouldn't have even been a first impeachment. And that's why they didn't try. Judge Thomas Griffith, an appointee of former President George W. Bush, wrote the Friday opinion with a concurrence from Judge Karen Henderson, who was appointed by George Bush Sr. Please spare me. These are old school Republicans. They are not the same Trumpist Republicans. And just because they're Republicans now doesn't mean they owe any allegiance to Donald Trump. Stop playing these games, BuzzFeed. We express no view on the merits except to emphasize a crucial aspect of our constitutional design. The branches have long resolved their differences through negotiation and compromise. Judge Judith Rogers, who was appointed by former Democratic President Bill Clinton, said in a dissent that the majority's decision may undermine Congress. The court removes any incentive for the executive branch to engage in the negotiation process, seeking accommodation, all but ensures future presidential stonewalling of Congress and further impairs the House's ability to perform its constitutional duties, Rogers said. At least for now, The decision against House Democrats shuts down attempts to obtain fresh evidence in its investigations of the president and make McGahn, who was the White House general counsel, discuss what he knew about the Russia probe. Russia is over. I can't believe they're still trying to play these games, but they lost. Good, good, finally. But they're not going to stop. And we know they're not going to stop. But at least there's a court victory. And it wasn't Trump who appointed these people. They say, It was not immediately clear if the House Judiciary Committee would appeal the decision, but many believe the McGahn case is destined for the Supreme Court, so Trump may still lose. McGahn had departed the White House in October 2018, well before Trump's conversations with Ukraine that led to the impeachment inquiry. But as the case rolled ahead, House Democrats insisted his knowledge was relevant to removing the president from office as well, but he didn't even work there. Can we stop I am going to really enjoy this later bit of the segment where the Washington Post tears apart Russiagate fake news. Thank you, Washington Post. I appreciate this one. McGahn's case is specifically about whether White House staff must appear to testify before Congress, not that they can answer every question because executive privilege allows the president to withhold particularly sensitive information. But Trump's Justice Department has claimed to possess an exceptionally broad shield saying top aides like McGahn are absolutely immune from compelled congressional testimony. I mean, he's a lawyer. Justice Department lawyers representing McGahn argued in a January 3rd hearing that courts should stay out of the current political food fight. But the case animates a rerun of American history that's never reached a season finale. Many presidents have bristled at calls for their staff to testify before Congress, including George W. Bush administration, including the George W. Bush administration unsuccessfully attempting to block White House counsel Harriet Myers from testifying in 08. And yet no federal appeals court has ever set legal precedent by resolving the dispute. So why pretend like it's only because the Republican appointed judges are, are, are doing this? Or why pretend it's because Republicans appointed these judges? No one's done it before. Why would they do it now? McGahn's imbroglio began when Democrats who controlled House Judiciary Committee sought his testimony in spring 2019 as they investigated elements of the Russia probe by former special counsel Robert Mueller. After the White House repeatedly claimed McGahn was immune, the committee filed suit. I'm not going to read too much into this because suffice it to say, they lost. In the end, they say, in another closely watched case, House Democrats sought testimony from Charles Kupperman, the president's former deputy national security advisor in the impeachment inquiry. Kupperman asked a court to declare whether he had immunity, but a judge dismissed the case as moot in December after Democrats withdrew their subpoena and they withdrew it because they would have lost and they had nothing to impeach the president on. It was a sham. 
because now we're learning that Ukraine is actually forcing a probe into the firing of Viktor Shokin. Viktor Shokin, he's that prosecutor that everyone said was corrupt. Joe Biden bragged about getting him fired. If, you, if, you don't, if he's not fired in six hours, you're not getting the billion dollars. Well, Trump asked about that. He said, there's this video. It looks horrible. And they said because Trump asked about it, it was an abuse of power to dig up dirt on a political opponent. And they never proved that. It was just their assumption. They never even asked the president or any of the witnesses what was Trump's frame of mind pertaining to the 2020 election and Joe Biden. Because as we know now, Joe Biden is not the front runner, nor is he even winning at this point. Maybe he will. I don't know. But Donald Trump has expressed concern over going up against Bernie Sanders because Bernie Sanders talks trade. Why would Trump want dirt on Biden unless it's just because Biden is dirty? Now, the Washington Post is going to be biased on this one because, of course, this is a tough thing to admit. But here's the story. Once again, a slight vindication for Donald Trump. Ukraine court forces probe into Biden role in firing of prosecutor Viktor Shokin. They report. A court ruling in Ukraine has forced state investigators to open a probe into alleged pressure by then Vice President Joe Biden that led to the 2016 dismissal of Viktor Shokin as the country's prosecutor general, officials said Thursday. President Trump last year pressed Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky for an investigation of this kind, leading to Trump's impeachment by the House and his eventual acquittal in a Senate trial. Shokin's firing, however, was not a unilateral action directed by Biden. It was prompted by a push for anti-corruption reforms developed in the State Department and coordinated with the European Union and the International Monetary Fund. Shokin's lawyer, Alexander Teleshetsky, said the probe was launched in response to a court order after an appeal for action by Shokin. The State Bureau of Investigation confirmed a case was open. They are probing whether or not Biden interfered. It's not proof. It's not absolute evidence. It is just a slight vindication that the courts in the Ukraine say there is enough here to go on. We should investigate. It could result in complete exoneration, but we'll see. Donald Trump said, hey, look into this. And now a court has agreed. You know what? Maybe we should. Yet the Democrats thought that was grounds for impeachment. Do you want to now claim that the courts in Ukraine are corrupt and doing Trump's bidding? Oh, of course they will. Of course they will. That's absurd. I am sick and tired of the conspiracy theories. There is no grand conspiracy between the courts in Ukraine and Donald Trump to go after Joe Biden. You want to talk conspiracy theories? You're talking nonsense. Let the investigation happen. If Biden's got nothing to hide, then what's the problem? Trump and his allies have put intense pressure on Zelensky's administration to open investigations into Biden and his son, Hunter Biden, who sat on the board of Ukrainian uh, gas company Burisma. From late 2018, Shokin met with Trump's personal attorney, Giuliani, as Giuliani sought political dirt on the Bidens. They made that up. They made that up. That is an assumption, an opinion that has never been proven. What we know about what Giuliani was doing can be framed in many ways. But to claim it was seeking dirt on the Bidens is an opinion masquerading as fact in this story. You want the fact? Giuliani met with Ukrainian officials to discuss potential corruption uh, deal pertaining to Joe Biden. For what reasons? Don't know. I can't assume it was it was well-intended or malintent. Maybe Giuliani wanted to weed out corruption. Maybe it was about helping the president. I can't assume that. And neither can they, but they do it all the time. Let's see what the courts figure out. But of course, they're going to try and frame it like, but that means Trump's pressure campaign is working. Not nah, sorry. That's a conspiracy theory you've never proven. Trump was acquitted. And now we learned that the courts have sided with him on article, uh, article of impeachment two, obstruction of Congress, that his that McGahn didn't even have to testify. Shokin has claimed he was pushed out by Biden because he tried to launch a probe into Hunter Biden's role at Burisma. False. There was a dormant investigation into Burisma, and he claims he was fired because of it. In fact, Ukrainian investigations into Burisma related to the period before Hunter Biden joined the board. That's right, Washington Post. Why would you then frame it this way? Quote, they need to investigate this. They have no other alternative. They are required to do this by the decision of the court. If they don't, then they violate a whole string of procedural norms, Teleshetsky said in an interview. Shokin's January appeal to the court mentioned by mentioned Joe Biden by name. But the case was opened by the SBI mentions only a U.S. citizen. Daria Kalaniak, director of Ukraine's Anti-Corruption Action Center, said that under Ukrainian law, 
Anyone could go to court and demand the SBI open a case. If a court approved it, the SBI was required by law to do so. Even if officials did not believe there was enough evidence, the court approved it. That's the point. It is a court relief. Trump is now getting vindication through different courts. I'm not going to pretend Ukraine is a perfect country. It's a corrupt and, and dirty country. It is. I think Ukraine's cool. I got I have friends who live there, so I'm not trying to be mean, but they got serious problems with corruption. And I mean dirty in the sense of like political dirt, not like it's actually a really beautiful place. They got good food. But no, it is it is a politically dirty and corrupt place. So perhaps, perhaps it's possible then that this prosecutor was fired in exchange for loan guarantees from the United States government. That is still corruption. Now let's get real. Burisma, the head of Burisma, well, I don't have it pulled up, but uh, Mykola, I believe, what's, what's his name? Zlachevsky. Here we go. Mykola Zlachevsky. He was cleared by the new guy who came in from Biden. So let, let, me, let me try and get this for you guys. Joe Biden comes in. If he's not fired, you're not getting the money. There was an open investigation, but it was dormant. They then fire this guy and a new prosecutor comes in who clears Lachevsky of all wrongdoing. Zlachevsky then returns to Ukraine up until Trump steps in and then he flees. They believe, I think he's, he's in Monaco now. That's why I think the, because he fled because the investigations were coming. Could it be that because of Joe Biden's interference, the worst case scenario, he got an innocent guy fired? I mean, well, I mean, the best case scenario for Biden, our assumption is that he got an innocent guy fired because it turns out this guy was dirty. They reopened investigations and he fled the country. Isn't that strange? Well, now the courts are saying we're going to look into this. Good news for Donald Trump. But now I bring you to a particular reporter. And you know what? I don't want to be overly harsh on this MSNBC, uh, uh, um, you know, correspondent or whatever role she has, a contributor. But the Washington Post is being hard. This is a reporter named Natasha Bertrand. And the Washington Post writes this story, how Politico's Natasha Bertrand bootstrapped dossier credulity into MSNBC gig. I'll tell you the gist of it. They basically say that this woman who worked for Business Insider and then Politico and the Atlantic was being used essentially to justify the absurd fake news coming out of Russiagate. She would come on and say something as to why it was probably true when it wasn't. And they reached out for comment. And of course, nobody really wants to do it. Politico, of course, said they stood by Natasha Bertrand. Let me read a little bit here. And then I want to show you why this is so dang interesting that this person with hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter kept pushing Russiagate, which is now bunk, and still tries justifying it. They, they, they actually claimed that, uh, I, I believe it was Natasha Bertrand. We'll read this. They have a statement here from Glenn Greenwald. She actually argued they should restrict information that the government shouldn't be releasing, you know, the information proving Russiagate to be false. Actually, let me just do this. Consider, however, that Beltway reporters for decades have been fighting over redaction from the national security bureaucracy. Here, Politico was all but clamoring for it. Quote, I cannot fathom being a journalist and complaining that the government isn't hiding more information, says Glenn Greenwald. So let me introduce you to this story. They, Eric Wemple of the Washington Post writes, Russian election inter interference is back in the news. According to reports from last week, Congress received warnings from intelligence officials that the Kremlin favors the reelection of President Trump. Those sirens prompted a freak out from Trump himself, who worried that his Democratic detractors would use the information against him. Where there's a report on Russian meddling, there's an MSNBC segment waiting to be taped. Last Thursday night, MSNBC host Joy Reid, subbing for all-in host Chris Hayes, turned to political national security reporter Natasha Bertrand with a question about whether Trump, quote, wants Russian meddling or whether he can't accept that foreign help is there. Bertrand responded, we don't have the reporting that suggests that the president has told aides, for example, that he really wants Russia to interfere because he thinks that it's going to help him, right? No, we don't have that reporting, though there's no prohibition against fantasizing about it on national television. Such is the theme of Bertrand's commentary during previous Rus coverage of Russian interference, specifically the dossier of memos drawn up by former British intelligence officer Christopher Steele. With winks and nods from MSNBC hosts, Bertrand heaped credibility on the dossier, which was published in full by BuzzFeed. In repeated television appearances, her written work has appeared on Business Insider, The Atlantic and Politico, where she is now a national security reporter. Along the way, she bootstrapped her punditry into a contributor's role on MSNBC, probably making a good amount of money. The boosterism dates back years 
They say on September 18th, 2017, for example, Bertrand participated in a collective journalistic failure on the MSNBC airwaves. On All In, Bertrand, who then worked for Business Insider, discussed an apparent scoop from CNN that Paul Manafort, the former campaign chairman for Trump, had been wiretapped before and after the 2016 presidential election under the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. To shower context on the apparent news, Bertrand remarked that securing a FISA warrant is extremely difficult. And she sandwiched the report with previous reporting that the feds had taken a similar action regarding former Trump campaign advisor Carter Page. They also got a warrant for Carter Page, who, if you remember, in the infamous Trump Russia Steele dossier, it said that Carter Page was actually working as a liaison, being managed by Paul Manafort as a kind of go-between. So these pieces are all starting to come together, and it's really alarming. Unless, of course, you actually know what's going on. Wemple then writes, not so alarming as it turned out. For one, CNN was wrong about the Manafort wiretapping story, as made clear in the report from Michael Horowitz. The network added a Weasley editor's note to the Manafort story as a means of wishing away the bad news. For another, the Horowitz report made clear the FBI made numerous omissions and errors in the FISA process and still secured authorization. So let me just slow down. I don't want to get too in the weeds on this one. Suffice it to say, MSNBC has been chock full of insane conspiracy nonsense for the past several years. And now Trump is facing some vindication from the courts and the press. I can't believe it. The Washington Post of all outlets actually going after the fake Russiagate smears. But let me show you how it all comes together. Take a look at this Politico story. Why it reads, Ukrainian efforts to sabotage Trump backfire. Kiev officials are scrambling to make amends with, president, with, with the president-elect after quietly working to boost Clinton. From Kenneth Vogel and David Stern, January 11th, 2017. We know that there was an effort from some Ukrainian officials to help Hillary Clinton get elected. This is a fact. It has been established in Ukrainian courts, for instance, and reported by the New York Times. But I bring you now to this hilarious story. Senate panel look into Ukraine interference comes up short. It says some Republican senators recently questioned whether Kiev tried to sabotage Donald Trump's campaign in 2016, but the GOP led intelligence committee looked into the theory and found scant evidence to support it. I'm not going to go through everything she claims, but I think it's fair to say based on how she interpreted past news, it was likely not entirely true. And this story, of course, from Natasha Bertrand, who is now being called out for her bad reporting in the past. And now we have this one. How a Russian disinfo op got Trump impeached. The Kremlin may have been laying the groundwork for blaming Ukraine for 2016 as early as 2015 by Natasha Bertrand, conspiracy theorist extraordinaire. She wasn't reporting on Russiagate. She was just parroting government talking points that turned out to be bunk. And now it's likely that she's just pushing weird conspiracies and Politico is chugging along. You know what's really funny? Politico reported this. Ukrainian efforts to sabotage sabotage Trump backfire. And then Politico reported multiple stories without retracting their original report. That doesn't make sense at all. You can't report the Ukrainians did it and then go on to report it didn't happen. But of course, it was not just this one reporter who had pushed the lies coming out of the government or certain government actors and certain political partisans. But she's now gone to she's now graduated to claiming Russia is trying to blame Ukraine. Okay, you know what? A Ukrainian court just opened a probe into the firing of Viktor Shokin. Is that a Russian plot? What kind of conspiracies are you all talking about? You're nuts. I'm sick and tired of the conspiracy mainstream press, MSNBC is disgusting conspiracy trash. Rachel Maddow should be ashamed of herself and all of these correspondents should be as well. They have pushed this psychotic nonsense onto the American public and they have destroyed so much of our political landscape because they are insane people. I believe it was Chris Hayes or or someone on MSNBC had on Jonathan Chait saying Trump may have been a Russian asset since the 1980s or Rachel Maddow who claimed that the Russians might turn off your electricity in the winter in Fargo. Oh, the crazy conspiracy trash continues. And now they're trying to act like, what, what is this story? It's from, stories from just a month ago, January 22nd. It was a Russian disinformation plot that tricked Trump into wanting to investigate Ukraine. Oh, what's that? A court in Ukraine has agreed to open, to, to, has ordered an investigation to be opened. But I thought it was a conspiracy theory. 
Are you saying that a Russian plot against Ukraine has forced their courts, has tricked their courts? I'm done playing these games. Launch the investigations. Tell me what happened. Trump is already winning in the courts. I'm done with this. You messed up, Democrats. You made a mistake. You jumped the gun. And now you've got egg on your face. I am so sick and tired of this complete fake news crap. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcastnews. I hope you've enjoyed it because I got more coming and I will see you all then.